everyone and welcome back to the Botanist Garden Club. I'm Wendy. And I'm Elka. And we're so happy to be here together. We do love having these episodes where we the two of us are together. together, yes. <laughs> she is my compat compatriot in gardening yeah. and all things gardening. She helped me out a lot in the garden. I learned a well, lot. Well, it kind of is what gardening is all about. It's building communities, helping each other, mm -hmm. helping each other. Yeah, that's each right. Yeah. <laughs> Knowledge sharing is kind of what we do here, too, at yeah. the Botanist Garden Club. <laughs> I think it's good, too, because it does sort of deepen a friendship when you can get out in the garden and work together. I really like that. So today, yes. Yes, <laughs> that's work for us. Today, we would love to present to you the wonderful world of oriental trumpet lilies, otherwise known as OTs or skyscraper lilies. Mm -hmm. Skyscraper is the key word. They can get to be so tall well, and we, beautiful. We saw pictures of customers <laughs> sending us pictures and they're, they're literally sitting or standing underneath. Yeah. So we're talking eight, nine feet sometimes, which is not the average, average yeah. height, yeah, but they <laughs> could get really skyscraper height. Yeah. <laughs> I've had a few in my garden that get to be, you know, four feet, five feet tall, but I do have issues. I don't have the best soil and I don't have necessarily the best enrichment program going on in my garden so <laughs> they sort of fend for themselves but quite frankly they're quite lovely at whatever height they get to four feet five feet yeah. or even more exactly the, the great thing on oriental trumpet is that the hybridizers took the best of both varieties i mean some are known for fragrance and color then the other ones are for size for uh, also for color stem stability and so now if you combine that then you have the best you have the best colors the biggest size flowers and the best stem so, I mean, best I of both worlds, basically. Totally. Yeah. But fragrance, for me, is one of the key features for them. And I think I told you this story before. I used to have them in the driveway, or lined along my driveway. Mm -hmm. And so when I would come in in the evening and they were blooming, I'd have my windows open and their fragrance would just waft through. They've got that sort of spicy fragrant of the fragrance of the trumpet lily and then that oriental sweetness. So it's a really fabulous combination. And if, if fragrance isn't your thing, you can plant them towards the back, but if fragrance is your thing, then bring them forward, let them be the showcase and the, the fragrance capital of your garden. Exactly. Your, your and lovely. because of the big size and the shape, uh, the cool thing is then you, first of all, you'll need that many. And it's so a real, true. you know, you have them towering in the in the backyard or in the, in the back end of your yard, uh, and they can be seen from far away because they're just yeah. so beautiful, big, and especially if they have a bright color too. Yes, exactly. I love too the fact that they're really strong stems. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I have never had to stake an oriental trumpet lily in my life. They come out of the ground and they're thick and they are super supportive of the many flowers that bloom around the top of them. I've never mm -hmm. had to worry about it at all. Yeah, but what you actually can do to help them in, in uh, just as an addition is um, we know that the oriental or any lily makes uh, roots on the side of the stem. Oh. So if you plant them a little bit deeper, then the stems also make the roots and help them to stabilize it. It helps very much the oriental because oh. it's very top heavy. It's a, a thinner stem on a very, or a, a big flower on a very a thin stem yeah so if you plant them deeper it gives them more stability so that it's just a little side note a little that's, trick on the side there that's <laughs> great and actually that can be said for all of the, li the lilies I think as well yeah. because they are hardy in zone five to nine but three to five they're not as hardy mm -hmm. so you want to mulch them and I find what ends up happening sometimes with the lilies is that they tend to heave a little bit year after year mm -hmm. so if you plant them a little bit deeper they've got more room and more soil on the top of them to sort of hold them down yeah which yeah. is which is and and the, the cool part is also then these uh, fabulous lilies they bloom between mid and late season mm -hmm. which is always you know especially when it goes towards the end of of the season or the later season is uh, there's not a lot that is blooming at the time so yeah. our lilies still are going strong i always do some extras because i like to cut them and with lilies big lilies and good fragrant lilies you don't need a lot so sometimes it's not even a whole stem that you have to cut off you just take one flower and take that inside just oh, wonderful. beautiful mm -hmm. and i know that your grandmother or your oma and my mom were the same way they used to take one flower yeah. and put it in a bowl. The floating oh, that's flower. right. That's right. <laughs> well, it was their still signature. Works. Yeah. yeah, it's the Germany, signature thing. Germany, Vancouver. It was the same thing. It's yeah, universal. but we have a fabulous uh, variety. It's called Samira or Samira. Mm -hmm. Samira. Uh, I love it because it's when you, you ask me my favorite fruit eating is peach and when i hear even the word peach make me as a color it. yeah it's <laughs> <laughs> as a color as a fruit but uh, it's a very peachy color and it has kind of a more like thick 
petals almost. Oh. It's a very rich trumpet. Mm -hmm. uh, yellow is in there, dark red, and, and that peach. It's just a beautiful feel-good color for me. I oh yeah, those are, those are nice. And I, like you say, peach is not necessarily a color we see in a lot of the lilies. It's, mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. fairly a fairly new feature. I agree, yes, totally. Yeah. Love it. Beverly's Dream, I love absolutely because it has so many colors. It's almost on unreal, that one, yeah. how, and how detailed, mm -hmm. how detailed it is. It is. There's a beautiful sort of white outer edging, and then it goes to a really beautiful kind of a blood red, then yellow, and the throat is lime green. Yeah. The flowers face sort of upward, which is another thing that's really wonderful about the OT lilies, is the fact that they're not all downward facing. Some of them are up, some of them are straight up because that's their parentage, that's their lineage, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and that's a really beautiful thing about them. But that yeah, Each color is almost like a star, and a star, yeah. and a star, and a star oh. gets smaller and smaller. It's just fabulous. I mean, yeah. it's, it's amazing what the, the breeders come up with and it how is. great they look. And there's more and more. The colors that we're seeing are, are pretty spectacular. Mm -hmm. We have also one, it's called Outback, and that one is uh, perfect for the one that I was talking about, if you have them a little bit in the back, because it's a canary oh, yellow yeah. flower. Uh, super pretty, really, just just a fabulous flower, and because Not it's so it. yeah, it's a sunshine. Uh, it's like a little sunshine in the back of your of your yard. So you see it from far away. It's a real showstopper. You can it call is. It. That's great. Mm -hmm. they, they, I think they sort of look almost like yellow velvet. Mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. is how I liken it to because the color is just is sort of unreal. And I love purple prints. Yeah, I've had that in my garden. You, for years, you see I know, that, five yeah. <laughs> years now, and going strong. And it's the first lily that I've ever had, or OT lily that I've ever had, that has come back year after year. Because we do have issues here in British Columbia with sort of excessive moisture. But obviously the spot that I've planted them in is perfect for them, and it comes back year after year. And the color you see in the catalog, that rich, deep purple, is the color you see. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it doesn't translate in the picture, but these are gorgeous, dark purple, and they come back every year. Nice thick stems, and mine are now at about this height, which would be about four and a half feet. Mm -hmm. oh, I, I think what I really love the most on lilies in general is they are so easy. Yes. I mean, it's, it's really like it's, I, I even recommend it as a beginner plant because it's literally making a hole. We have that saying in the dig, dig drop, drop done, and, done. and it, it really <laughs> is like that. I mean, if some people say, you know what, I'm not a gardener, I don't have a green thumb, uh, all of these kind of things are, it's, it's that I'm scared of gardening language, but you don't have to, especially when you start with lilies. These ones, or, or any lilies, you, you put them in a hole, you cover them, put them a little bit deeper. We usually recommend with any kind of bulb, about twice the size of the bulb yeah. is the depth. Lilies, you can go three or four exactly. times deeper, especially when you live in a cooler climate. Mm -hmm. And then mulch it if you want to give mulch it yeah. protection. We, I think we recommend three zone, what is it? Three, three to, to five, five yes. is mm -hmm. mulch, yeah. yeah. And that just means, you know, they are hardy, but um, the extra protection in the colder climates. But then you just sit there and you wait and you are rewarded the, for the, the same year with absolutely flowers. You know, last year it was interesting. I planted a couple of the OT lilies just a little bit later because the season had finished. I was busy, didn't <laughs> get a chance to plant them. Yeah. So I did. And I was rewarded by sort of a succession of blooms. So the ones that had been in my garden for years mm -hmm. were blooming. Mm -hmm. And then another week later, two weeks later, I was still having those blooms from the ones I had planted a little bit later. It was accidental, but it turned out to be beautiful. Yeah. Never too late. That's right. Never too late. <laughs> so we love, as you know, if you're a member of our garden club, that we love to give away lovely goodies every week. And mm. this week, we actually ask you a question. You can't get them for free. you got to do something. And our question this week is, which OT lily has the most colors? We did mention it today. Yes. And we're hoping that you can either go back and figure it out and then send the answer to gardenclub at botanis.com in an email. And we'll choose three lucky winners to receive a $10 certificate. <laughs> three of them for $10 each. <laughs> and they are can be used for anything, so spending on a on a beautiful Lilies. lily or a <laughs> collection, whatever you Maybe would like. Maybe for your shipping, whatever it is. Oh, that's yeah, exactly. It's, it's like getting free shipping almost. It's just a fabulous thing. I like that. So we hope you've enjoyed this episode. And please remember to subscribe. And what, Yes, subscribe. What do the, what do the girls say? Like. Yeah, like. <laughs> comment below. Well, that's right. We would love it if you do that. Tell your friends and neighbors about us because we love what we're doing here. And we hope that it translates across into these episodes that we do each week because this is truly what we love to do and love to share the good news of gardening. Absolutely. Thanks okay. very much everybody. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye-bye.